Okay, let another couple minutes go by and then um, we'll get started. I know people will continue to come in as we start, but we'll give them a little bit more time. I'm just gonna test one feature real quick with the spotlighting just to show the other interpreter Virgil. Okay. Now it's on me. Hi, Brett. Brett, I see your information. If you go into the corner of your picture where the three dots are, you can go down and see where it says rename, and you'll be able to rename so we can see you in the participants list. I just changed Brett's name. We have to do, they have to hover over their name and go to the right to click more and that's actually where they change it. Oh, got it. I'm looking at it differently. Sorry about that. No, I did the same thing. Uh, let's see, this can be. Well, welcome everybody. We're gonna give it maybe one more minute and then we're gonna get started. We have a couple still coming in. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session today. I know some other people will be joining us as they come in, but I want to say hi to all of you and welcome to the fall semester. Um, it's, I was, as, we, I was, as we've heard for the last few days and we've all been saying since March 16th, it feels really weird. And that is, that is the truth. It does feel really, really weird. But um, as most of you know, I am Donna Cooper and I am the Dean of Student Success and Learning. And I will be doing this presentation today along with my colleague whose name is, she'll introduce herself. Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Laval. I'm the Director of Technology Support Services. One week shy of my one year, um, I've discovered that uh, I would only do a flex day thing when Susie comes in and begs us to do it. So. It was not where we expected to be today, but we're happy to be here, I think. Um, yes. We have an agenda. You know, we've made this a bit informal, uh, just mostly because we kind of wanted to get to the Q&A at the end too, and, and be here to answer some questions. I know there's, Don and I have experienced a lot of questions about what the fall holds for technology and library support and tutors and all that. So that's what we're here to answer today. Um, we have a short little agenda. You'll see we're gonna talk about some of our amazing staff. Uh, if anybody's in here, please, if your name is not on this list, do not take any offense to anybody um, because we were kind of spotlighting who's been here to hand out that equipment. You know, where we were when we started all this, kind of what we needed, how we did it, which I still think I wonder every day. Um, the teamwork and collaboration that Donna and I have found to, to get through this and what we have now, what's on its way and where we're going and the reality of it, the frustrations that we hit. And then at the end, we'll get to the Q&A. So also feel free to put questions in the chat box. Um, Kaylon is our facilitator for our session today. And so she'll be monitoring the chat box. She's been letting you into the session. And so she'll be um, a part of our team in that way. So if you have questions as we go along, put them in the chat box and then we'll, if we don't get, if we don't get them answered, Kaylon will say, hey, somebody had a question about this for you. And hopefully we'll uh, get to all your questions um, as we go along. All right, so thank you. Um, yeah, it's a great picture of the, of the um, session. That was a great, great picture I stole from Donna today. <laughs> really fast too, we want to thank our awesome interpreters. We have two, we have Virgil and David with us that are here to help us through this today as well. So yes, yes 
We stole this picture from Donna. I stole this picture from Donna. It's a great picture. I, I stole it from somebody else. So it's, uh, but, uh, and also just a reminder that at the end of the session today, um, we need you to answer the session survey. Uh, the link will be in your Zoom confirmation email. So we'll try to remember, but this is our campus without people and it's very sad when there's no people on it. <laughs> it's definitely different. It was a different feeling this semester from last semester when I walked in in August and saw so many people in the hustle and bustle to coming into this August and trying to find, you know, I thought I had my feet on the ground coming from last August, what to expect. This was a whole new ball game. So. So first we'd like to thank our staff. So I'll uh, thank my, um, my staff. Um, Bouncing around. Yeah, in the, in the library, uh, our rock stars were Jamian Armstrong, Josh Peterson, Mua Zhang, uh, Karen Chittard, and Norma Handy. These people have been, um, since March 16th, have been on campus um, for the first few weeks almost every day, and then we moved to just three days a week, and now we're back to six days a week um, in our uh, library to check out devices and get things uh, scheduled and and help students and so we these people have just been phenomenal and I'm very very thankful that they're on our team um, for my staff that's listed over here like I said it's not everybody and everybody has contributed in a way but these guys have been religious about being here I had two guys from day one uh, Joe the school and Jeremiah Ganner that said they didn't want to work at home. They wanted to be here. They wanted to be here to support you. Um, when we moved to four tens, Andrew Rocha stepped in to be here. As we started seeing more equipment, everybody really stepped up. These guys have been here, if not once a week. Below there, I've got Sean Martin, Aaron Hansen, Mark Nichols, Jacques Gaston, and I spelled his name wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Moses Avila, Erica Abs, and, and Robert. You know these these guys have been here. No matter what I asked them to do, they've done it. They've been there to support you. They're answering phone calls where they're trying to hand out equipment. Jeremiah has led that for us. It's been phenomenal. Uh, these guys ha have stepped up like none other. So when everybody went home in March, not these guys, they all stuck around to make sure that they could hand out everything that you needed. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what we have. Oh, I don't know what, I something's going on with my PowerPoint. I'm sorry, it's uh, bouncing around on me a little bit. Uh, what we had, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we had to laugh when we started this process because what we had was definitely not what we needed when March, March, uh, just so everybody knows the official lock day of shelter in place, March 19th happened to be my birthday. So I guess I'll never forget this birthday because that was the day but you know, we really started pushing out equipment before that. We were trying to prep and when we stopped and looked around, uh, we did not have anything to hand out. Donna, how many was it? How many uh, laptops did the library have? The library had 15 laptops that were already in our inventory and available for checkout, except uh, tech services came down and took them from us because they needed to have an inventory to give to faculty. So um, tech services went around collecting laptops from all the laptop carts that were in various places across campus, up to and including the 15 laptops that we had in the library. So the library then had only calculators, which most of them were already out for the semester because students had checked those out in January. So we needed a lot. There was a lot of, you know, we looked around, how are people gonna answer the phones? How are people going to get on and teach their classes? How are they going to get students' attention? How are we going to keep going? And really, when I looked around TSS, I thought, oh my, we have nothing. Nothing prepared for something like this. Um, I'm not sure how anybody does try and prepare for this. You know, we pulled around and, and as a lot of our faculty who are on site understand, you know, the, the laptop carts that they had were a little outdated and they needed some updating and we had to go take all that and start getting it prepped and ready to go out, which was a feat because every piece of equipment that went out, 
that was already on site had to be re-imaged and pushed out again and changed because the security settings needed to be different. Software needed to be different. Um, we needed everything. How are we going to get people online? I know some of you guys are probably in some rural areas that the uh, Wi-Fi is not that strong. You don't have that connection. How are we going to come up with MiFi is and connections for you. Uh, those were all things that there were many sleepless nights and many hours trying to plan to get through. So it still doesn't want to move. So go ahead, Donna. I was going to say, so what we needed, uh, we needed tech services. That's what the library, that's what students needed. Uh, we needed tech services to help us figure out um, what we could get and how um, how soon it would be here and so so that was our collab that started our collaboration we're just like hey how are we gonna get devices so and part of that was how do you plan for what you don't know mm -hmm. how do we start this I know that everybody there's been a lot of people that have been on committees and task force and things that have gone on how do you plan for what you don't know for technology and where's the money gonna fall from because when it started, we didn't have the CARES funding. We didn't have those things, institutional money that's come in to help us support the staff, students, and faculty. Uh, it was overwhelming and not quite sure how we're gonna get there, but there were so many pieces of what we needed. You know, I, I think we made multiple orders. Let's start, you know, we could talk about MIFIs. We started with a little order and we need a lot more, which we'll get into later on of where we've been. Our biggest problem was not planning. How did we cover a lot of the faculty? How did I know what, what our adjuncts had at home or what our full-time faculty had at home to continue teaching? Uh, it's not like you take that survey every day uh, to see where people are and what they're doing. So we have, I, my PowerPoint is not liking me too. So how do we do it? Donna and I became very, very good friends. <laughs> Very we quickly. did, in fact, we did. As we moved through this, we went through, you know, we had to keep working. You know, there were days, again, as much as we think our staff that Donna and I didn't go home, we tried to be there with everybody to support and try and figure out how we tackle this the best way. And with a lot of support from the VPs and the deans and things that have moved forward, we really kept on working and getting through it. So we're gonna play a little video for you. Take me. I'm telling you this PowerPoint is not the same, you know, as, as I'll make everybody laugh as we work. You know, everybody's calling me once. They're normal two monitors and they're two, two, they're everything they have at their desk to be at home. I wish I could provide everything for everybody. I really do. But I'm working just like you on a laptop monitor and a screen and to be honest, I've never run a PowerPoint like this with the screen, so bear with me. So it's, it's frustrating and it takes a lot of time and I get it. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about teamwork and collaboration. Gee, we have a situation growing with the carbon dioxide. We have CO2 filter. We lost the sound, Jen. In case you have blackouts, the beginnings of brain asphyxia. What are the scrubbers on the command module? It takes black cartridges, the ones on the limb are round. I mean, this isn't a government operation. It just isn't the contingency we remotely looked at. Those CO2 levels are going to be getting toxic. Well, I suggest you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. People mess it up. People upstairs, the candidates just won, and we got to come through. We got to find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. Using nothing but that. Let's get it organized. Okay, okay let's build a filter. Let's get some pumping. The CO2 gas is literally poison gas in our own every breath. Get it out. Heads up. What's this? That's what they got to make. Well, you got the procedures for them right here. That's it. All right, where is the kid? You have a flight plan up there? 
uh, Furman and Andy. Uh, Jack's got one right here. Okay, we have a uh, an unusual procedure for you here. We need you to rip the cover off. Once you rip the cover off the flight plan. It's a pleasure. All right, now the other materials you're going to need here are uh, a lithium hydroxide canister. We need two lithium hydroxide canisters. I'm sorry. A uh, roll of gray tape. The duct tape, an LPG bag, two LPG bags, uh, red suit hoses, uh, got the white plate cover. What about their level of carbon dioxide? It's uh, climbing. <laughs> You're saying that they're almost out of breathable air. No, wait a second. Wait a second. That's, that's not what he said. He said we're working. You want to cut duct tape? Long. Just use your arm. Good arm length. Oh, okay, Houston, I see what you're getting at. Hold on. Okay, Jack. Turn that piece of tape down the middle lengthwise. All right. Hold on, Houston. Well, the astronauts appear to have enough oxygen to keep them alive. One thing they have too much of is carbon dioxide. With each breath, the three men expel more of the poisonous gas into the lunar module cockpit, and the scrubbers intended to keep the atmosphere breathable are quickly becoming saturated. Uh, Houston, uh, what do we do if we uh, rip the bag? Can we take it? I just tore the bag. Uh, uh, stand by. I'm going to back out. So they've still got uh, a long way to come, and they are now working on their backup facilities, their emergency facilities, and the problem is if anything more goes wrong, they're in real trouble. So that is how we all felt. So just to give you a scope of the problem on my end in the library, once uh, I got a, a notice that said, oh, Donna, we've ordered 850 iPads. When can you start giving them out? Well, how much time do I have to get them cataloged and in the system and with a barcode so we can keep track of them? Oh, you don't. They're just going to kind of get here and we need to turn them around. They're only sending me like 50 or 100 at a time, you're not going to get all of them. <clears throat> so it's um, very much the same. Just what happened was, you know, my staff had to sit around and think, well, how are we, how are we going to check things out? They had to think outside the box they've normally done. How are you going to check things out and keep track of them so that we know where all of these devices have gone? And now this is all going to be done by hand. Um, and so we came up with a plan. We made copies of the boxes and the backs of the devices and we did a whole we have nine binders in the library right now where we did a manual checkout of all of these items that we did in a in very quick time um, and working with um, the TSS department they we all worked in collaboration Jeremiah would bring us the new ones once they, because they have to process some of them would bring them. Here's 50 more for you. Oh, somebody's got to make copies. And so I have about half of my team coming in to do that because um, not everyone is, was able to come and be on campus. So we were um, working in some, some very interesting. So this video from Apollo 13, this little clip just reminds me so much of what the last five months have felt like um, for, for us <clears throat> because once we did all of that work, then it was May and the semester was ending. And then it was 150 emails. How do students return all this stuff? How do they check out stuff for the summer? What are we gonna do? Do we have enough hotspots? No, we don't, we need more hotspots. We didn't have enough to start with and we had to tell students we don't have them. And so this went, uh, this was constantly, this kind of today, this is all the stuff you have to work with. So figure out how you're gonna make it work for the next two weeks with just this stuff and then Next week, we'll get new stuff on the table and figure out how we're going to make it work with that stuff. So it was very much a team that worked together and trusted each other, both within each of our areas and I think between our two areas, just really trying to work together. Um, in the TSS area, we battled a lot of those things, but ours was, I have never begged so many vendors to bump me up and called in more favors and tried to guarantee the world everything in that first week, that first five days 
um, was a whirlwind of how are we going to find this equipment? Oh my gosh, we're now battling every other school district, K-12 or higher ed. What are we going to do? And now we're battling all the people that are trying to get things done in their home to just work. I have called in so many favors and I probably owe so many drinks and I might have sold my firstborn once or twice along the way saying that she was a good kid because we called in multiple favors. And uh, luckily in the first five days, um, we were able to secure 200 brand new laptops. And um, I think the first round of my fives we did was about 100, and, 100 to 150. I will tell you the UPS guy that delivers to my house was <laughs> petrified of probably what I was having delivered because uh, at that time, the warehouse had shut down. We were trying to figure out how we were going to get the equipment. What were we going to do? How were we going to get it? Um, I will tell you, UPS left shipments on the loading dock. When Campus PD called me and said, um, did you order a bunch of things from Dell on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon or Saturday night? And I'm like, oh yeah, UPS would just drop it off because nobody was there. So we tried to ship the things that we could to my house. Uh, we tried every avenue that we could with every amount of support that we could find. Uh, you know, and the piece of that at that point was just trying to get the hardware. We hadn't even looked at what software was needed to continue moving our classes forward at that time. It was an interesting experience. And when Donna sent me this video, I'd never laughed so hard. I, I said, oh, that is really how I felt that day. And there was really no question about us trying to figure it out to keep everything going. So a little bit of what we have now, Ooh, see it's every time I put one, it was to go to two. So hang on one second here. So what we have now, let's t so, after that first five days, we were then able to uh, secure another 225, 221, because four were damaged in shipping, uh, laptops to give to the library directly to keep. We were really battling between the, um, you know, the faculty and the staff and how to support the students. We knew the faculty needed to have equipment. We knew the staff needed it. We needed the students needed it. So there was a lot of balancing once Dell stepped up and, and my rep, I do owe a great appreciation to, they were able to secure another 221 that arrived that were specifically for students. They were here within 11 days. Uh, our first shipment of the brand new laptops were here in, I got them secured in the first five days. They were here within eight days. We really pushed and pushed to see what we could find. Um, we then started tackling a little bit of the soft phones that some of the staff and some of our full-time faculty know they're utilizing as soft phones. Uh, we then realized that uh, we had to get headsets to make it easier for you to hear. Uh, we then realized a lot of our current laptops that were in the labs didn't have cameras. We had to find cameras. Cameras, the webcams and the headsets were a whole different challenge for us to locate. Uh, I will say the K-12 schools got a huge hit on us. I shouldn't hit, they, they were definitely on a jump when there are already 40,000 of those things to assure what they can do. Um, and I'll let Donna talk about a little bit what they had in their area, and then we can go into where we're headed. So the um, library, <clears throat> once we received all of those um, devices, some of you may have heard sometimes students would say, oh, they don't have any more MiFi's. Oh, wait, now they have MiFi's. Oh, they're out of laptops. Oh, no, they have laptops. They're out of, you know, an iPad. Oh no, now they have them because as things would come in, they quickly went out. So we were constantly updating the website to say no MyFi's available. And then three days later, some would have come in. MyFi's are now available. So this was a constant coming and going. I mean, every day was just checking to make sure that what's on the website is exactly what we have so that students were getting the correct information. Um, and then, uh, as we continued to build up the inventory, making sure we got things cataloged, um, we tried to check things out as fast as we could manually so that we could then catch up with all of that when they came back. Um, when we uh, got ready to do the return in, the, in May, we decided we were gonna do it out in the parking lot. Um, one of my staff was really good at 
you know, just logistically thinking through those kinds of things. We had a big meeting and we we're all on board and we were going to have two weeks for soon. It was just drive by. They could drive through and drop it off. And then that was the time it went to 110 degrees for the first time. And so we had to then change and move everything inside uh, because we couldn't really have the staff out in the in parking lot C at three o'clock in the afternoon uh, when it was going to be 110. So, um, but we now have laptops, not enough. Uh, we have a very limited number of laptops. So we had to decide that only certain classes would be the students to get laptops because of the software that they needed that wasn't compatible on iPads. We have um, an inventory of MiFi's. The library does not currently have um, headsets that we're checking out. And obviously software is just what's already on the computers for us, but we are able to check uh, laptops, MiFi's, although we have a limited number of MiFi's right now. I think we're down to about 33 that are available, but we have some on order. And uh, we have about 500 iPads still available for students and um, about a hundred and something laptops for students that are in those particular programs. Um, part of that, uh, we will tell you that we have secured at the moment. Now, until they arrive, I know uh, during convocation, Dr. Goldsmith spoke about a lot of things that are backordered is again, we're still in the same battle. We are battling who's gonna get the equipment first. How many promises can you make? Where are we gonna get it? Uh, we have put on order another 400 MiFi uh, that will be for, you know, the majority of our students. Uh, we are really trying to assist them in that. We are offered, you know, we have lots of different offerings that show you know, a lot of, a lot of companies stepped up this year, uh, this five months, not this year, 2020. Somebody used the word smart yesterday. Yeah. And I like that because I think everything's kind of smushed together. So I think I'm going to use smart. I'm going to seal that because that's really how it is. Uh, I feel like yesterday was March. We have now also secured another 500 laptops that will be here by August 25th. Um, we are looking at giving, getting those checked out to a lot of staff and faculty who did not get anything at the time. Um, there are a lot of limitations. You know, I, I, if, forgive me if I ask questions when you make those requests for yourself, because I have to be careful of where we're going and where we're headed and, and watch what we have. Headsets. They're still tougher to find, which is why we're focusing on the new laptops with faculty and staff, because the cameras, as you can see, my camera's fairly strong uh, and they have a decent um, microphone in them. So when you're teaching, if we don't have the headsets, because I will tell you, we're struggling with finding headsets. And we do have one type that we're able to order that, that we know connect very simply. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about taking desktops home um, that's on a limited basis as we're trying to battle through that as well. We'll get there. Some of the great things that are coming though is that one of the things that I was able to work with my amazing team on is uh, some software that's going to be offered. I know that I'll use our choir. Our choir courses had wanted to acquire an app for the software to be able to collaborate and sing and do some different things. We were able to acquire that. We have a new software that is coming out and at the moment it's going to be to specific courses with uh, higher end software with licensing that is local to our campus that can't be downloaded to a device, particularly to buy a student. It's called Aeroporto. There's been a little bit of conversation about that. What it is, is it allows a student, no matter what their device on, if it's an iPad, a desktop and a phone, I wouldn't, the phone is there, but I know that's pretty small to connect to a desktop that has access to say all their engineering software, CAD, um, Photoshop, those things that are needed, uh, that will allow them to do that through one basic desktop. It also allows the faculty to have capability to collaborate in different ways through that software, uh, work with the student, see how long the students spent in the software, see how they did their work. It's a great piece of equipment that I do hope in the next 12 to 18 months I would be able to offer to everybody. Right now, this was our first step. We need to do a little more beta testing. It's a great opportunity that we have coming, coming here at FCC. Um, some of the other colleges, if you, if you teach in multiple colleges, don't have that quite yet.
but we are doing it here. So lots of great things on the way. Uh, you just got to bear with us a little bit. Like Donna said, uh, we have been checking everything out even for the staff and faculty by hand. So if you've come to the back door to get a piece of equipment during our times that we're open, Jeremiah is typing that in by hand, serial numbers and all, as that's where we've been because there hasn't been time to plan through that. So bear with us and we're getting there. <laughs> it's kind of one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, I spent a lot of time doing that the last few months. <laughs> um, uh, when Jennifer and I were talking about this, I, one of the um, one of the big frustrations is just what would seem to be simple communication. You forget how many things you decide in hallway conversations every day, where you walk by and say, and I say to one of my staff members, um, Norma is my operations lead, and I say, oh, hey, Norma, I was just in a meeting, and we need to make sure that we're doing X, Y, and Z. Can you make sure everyone knows about that? And then I walk on to my next meeting and Norma does that. Well, I don't see Norma in the hallway. Um, I would be on campus a few days a week. Um, she would be on campus a few days a week. We tried to keep people from being there 40 hours a week. So they would, we would trade off times that there would be someone on campus. And so then I would have that conversation with say my assistant and then we would make a change and then Norma would be wait, nobody told me that. I'm like, oh shoot, I'm so sorry. I forgot to make sure you knew that. So there was this constant thing of how many people should be on my emails, right? I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily like having that, but um, just how many people need to make sure they know this information. And so it was really important to, to start uh, just making sure that I included everybody. That was, that's probably been my biggest frustration. And then things would fall through the cracks. I'm like, how did nobody know this? Um, what happened? It's because none of us are ever in the same place, even though we had a once a week meeting. Um, things were changing so rapidly. I would just say things like, okay, for the next 30 minutes, what I'm telling you is correct. I don't know if it's correct after the next 30 minutes. And so um, we, would, we would kind of just try, the big thing for us was to give each other grace um, and patience and to trust and know that we all trusted each other and knew that we were all doing the best we could. So that's probably been probably one of my biggest frustrations um, for our side of, of the fence has just, and just not knowing things much like all of you. Am I, are we closed completely? Are we partially closed? Are we, are we partially open? Am I supposed to teach, um, you know, uh, all online, how am I supposed to do that? So all of the same things that all of us have, I think uh, for us have been really magnified because every other day there was new guidelines or new changes that we needed to make sure we were doing. So uh, that would have to be my biggest frustration. So I don't know about yours, Jennifer, but that was mine. Oh, there were, there were a few. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's frustrating when I want to help, similar to Donna, I wanna help everybody. If somebody needs something, I wanna be able to give it to you to to be successful, to help our students. Uh, and when you can't do that, you go home feeling defeated. And I knew that I hadn't done anything wrong, but I knew that I was frustrated and I couldn't get what I needed fast enough to get what you guys needed to continue. Uh, we appreciate, you know, everybody that had equipment at home, if they had questions, we would always try and help. Uh, we still today, I wish I could offer a piece of equipment to every single staff and faculty. I don't have that capability. so we have to really evaluate where we are and where we're headed. That frustrates me. That's probably my hardest piece is that I want to make it better. And when you can't, it's a bummer. So, and that's how everybody felt. It helped even when you wanted to help your students who didn't understand how to utilize Canvas or get in and submit an assignment because they were used to walking in and handing it to you. It's a frustration that we all felt. Um, we're gonna Go ahead. Sorry, Brett had a question and he was wondering if uh, you put together a list of what software, hardware, camera that adjuncts need to teach online and if you have any suggestions what type of internet speed they need as well. You know, Brett, that's a great question. The thing um, is, is that I can't tell you what you need to teach your course as in software. If it's something that's in your class that you utilize and you have something, if you've taught it and you have your own equipment, there's no need to get another piece of equipment. 
I, like I said, if you have a piece of equipment, I have to beg you to use your own if it's functional because um, we could have somebody that doesn't have anything at home at all. And so that's where we are. So if there's something you need, um, if you needed a camera, if there's things, there's requests. And the next slide is going to show you a little bit about the requests and where you go to make those. And we can make sure that's available as well. The yeah. type of internet speed really is, uh, I mean, high speed internet in general. I know that I uh, had to use a MiFi for a short time. I had moved in here five into my new home five days before uh, our lockdown. So I hadn't had everything set up either. And you're gonna need high speed, some type of high speed internet, even with the equipment that we provide to students. And if they have a MiFi, if they live in a rural area, like we've discovered, I'll, I'll use Avenal, not to pick on anybody. We know, and Kalinga, which I can only pick on Dr. Pimentel for, because his internet is terrible. And there is nothing I can do to fix where there isn't internet. If your cell service doesn't work, a MiFi is straight cell service. So if it, your cell phone doesn't work in an area, more than likely a MiFi won't work in that area as well. And that's been a huge frustration. I think Donna has taken the brunt of our students' frustration, where the staff and faculty have been contacting us. I, all I can say is I've provided a few uh, options that were out there, which had, um, I know that Comcast stepped up and did some lower uh, cost internet connections. Um, I believe Verizon did. There were some that stepped out and did that. If those were stronger than what I was obtaining, that was the only option I had. Your the reason I ask is because, um, you know, there's a lot of adjuncts out there that really had ancient technologies at their home, didn't understand what broadband was, you know, what high speed was, what a MiFi was, you know, and they might have used a laptop and it had Windows 1900 on there. <laughs> so... Yeah. You know, when it comes to that, you know, trying to help, you know, adjuncts that really had minimal technology usage at home because we came from such a culture of not really using a lot of technology for a lot of faculty, you know? It, it is. And it's, you know, adjuncts were a big fear for me is that how can I provide for our adjuncts as well as our full-time faculty, but it was because... Uh, I, honestly, I got the count. We have 981 adjuncts. You know, I, I keep hoping that uh, we magically get. I will tell you the one thing that Don and I probably should have spotlighted as we were talking about our, our iPads. We secured 1,000 through Apple that came from us, and we had an anonymous local donor donate 200 to our foster youth specifically mm -hmm. with cases and everything. And so I just had to no, and I just saw William. I know it's not just adjuncts, William. It's not. And that's the, the fine balance that, that I try and face every day of how do we make it all come together for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's um, one of the big things when we talk about frustrations, but talk about how our teams have trusted each other. I think it's the same thing because we need to remember as faculty that our students may or may not have internet access depending on where they live um, or may not have good internet access. Some students, a lot of students are coming on campus as was mentioned yesterday. They, they sit in their cars or they have sometimes sat on the benches and stuff to do, um, <clears throat> to do their homework and to be able to access because they can access the Wi-Fi when they're there. And I think, you know, I think for, for all of us, students, faculty, full-time or adjunct uh, administrators, some of the basics are just, you know, a camera is really important these days on, on your laptop. And that's one of the things, all the laptops, tech services went around and gathered up all over campus. Significant number of them were purchased with no camera. Um, so then, oh, well, we need to have cameras for, for people. So I think just some basics for everyone is, you know, to be able to have access to high-speed internet with, will make teaching online much easier. It will make learning online much easier having a camera, having a microphone, having some of those basic things, having the most, as much of an up-to-date um, software uh, operating system as you can. So I think that, you know, part of that for us is 
to be understanding and trying to help faculty and students um, get what they need. I had, uh, I'll just share a story. We have a lot of student stories from coming in, but their frustration level was so high um, in early April as, as we made this transition and they were coming in to get devices and we had many, many, many tears of frustration. But our, our students were great. They did everything we asked. They wore their masks. They sanitized their hands. They, they did all of those things. But the student said, I, I, I don't know how to operate an iPad. I don't know what, I don't know, what am I supposed to do? How do I turn it on? So we would walk them through that process. Um, and she said, I, I just don't know. I don't know how I'm going to communicate with my, with my teachers. And I'm already behind on two assignments. And, and I finally said, okay, let's just take a deep breath. All right, just breathe deep. And I said, here's what I'm going to tell you. On March 16th, when we moved to this, we had over 11,000 students who had never taken an online class. Some because they just never picked to do that, but had never taken an online class. I said, and a significant number of our faculty have never taught online. I said, so everyone's feeling the same. And she just, she said, really? I said, yes, we're all, we're all in this together. And I said, all you need to do is email your instructor and say, hey, I just got my iPad, trying to figure it out. I said, we're communicating with faculty, asking them to, we're all trying to be great, give grace and be lenient because it's, this is a new thing for all of us. And it was just so, it really helped her to realize, she just really thought she was the only one who couldn't do that. She was an older returning student and she said, just look at me. You can tell this isn't something I know how to do. <laughs> and um, so part of our job has been to help with all those student frustrations who can't make their MiFi work. And it's not, and it's, then we find out they don't have any, any internet anywhere near them and they don't really even have cell service. And so I think that that's the thing going into this fall semester is to remember we're still going to have a lot of that. Um, and that's not just with our students, but with faculty. I know all of you have spent a lot of time this summer trying to work through your frustrations of your stuff that won't work or I can't make this happen in my canvas and I can't I don't understand how this isn't I, I don't understand why it's not working so I don't know how to fix it and I think that um, the biggest thing we can do to help all of us is just to remember that we're kind of all in this together and um, even our students and uh, I just really do want to caution you we've had some some faculty want to require a laptop for their class, but we've gone through with the deans to look at classes, courses that need some specific software that demand a stronger um, system. And until we get the software Jennifer talked about, we're limiting laptops to students that are enrolled in those specific courses. Um, yep. So, and most of those, the nursing program, uh, uh, rad tech, um, administrative assistants, uh, some of the career tech programs, uh, CAD, automotive, um, engineering. Engineering got, uh, got uh, some funding to pay for some laptops specifically for engineering students and those are on hold. Those actually sit in my office um, for them to be able to come check out. So we're trying really hard. So your students are still going, I saw yesterday in the chat box when somebody talked about students using, going to school using their cell phones and someone had said, no, 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 they have to have a laptop. Well, they don't. So um, we, I think we need to be gracious to each other and to our students because um, otherwise we're just all gonna be frustrated um, all semester, but we'll keep at it. We're gonna keep at it. We get new, we get new laptops that'll have cameras and, and microphones on them so you can have a better experience online. So um, just again, as Jennifer said, just let her area know what you need as an instructor and let your students know we're gonna show you um, some two places for you to go to, to do that. So, um, and, and then we're gonna move into some Q&A for sure. So Jennifer, you wanna to go to the next slide and we can. Yes. Um, one thing really fast I wanna address, I got a private question really fast, on it. Okay. Um, two things. So as we were talking about students going outside and doing their work, it's not just students. We have faculty sitting in their car as well. So if anybody had asked, I know that uh, they asked what, we've really tried to get as much Wi-Fi as we can outside. So our first target was uh, lot K, which is behind the OAB 
just so you know, you can get access to wi our Wi-Fi all the way till the last row of the parking stalls. We worked super hard to get it out there. The goal is during this time is to find another parking lot where I have the capabilities to get more Wi-Fi out there. Because I think that as we are gonna see more and more of that as, as the fall semester starts and new students coming in and things that are going on. So I we are trying to find the next spot. Um, there are some things that when you guys do return that Donna has been working on with us too in the library and several are areas around the campus that you know we hopefully are able to uh, up your Wi-Fi connections and make things better that we've been actually doing through this entire pandemic as well. Um, I have an entire team on a project. They, they may not be very happy with me when this is over, but they've been trying to do that as well. Uh, so things are hopefully growing and, and getting better on everywhere. Uh, do people have to stay in their cars? Um, not necessarily, they can use the benches. Uh, we ask that if you, as a faculty, we can, you know, we can't obviously demand it, but as you see all over, it says, you know, please, this, you require a mask to enter the campus. Please be respectful of people. And if they're wearing masks or not, they can't go in any buildings, as Donna just said. And uh, Mark asked about Texas Instruments in this, the graphing calculators. Please talk to your dean if there's something you need to check out of a room on that. Okay, so let's move forward here. So we have two helpful links here that I want to make sure. Ugh, I was trying to make sure it stopped. Uh, two have a link. So there is a link for our students' checkouts. Uh, let's see if I can get that piece up for you, and I'll let Donna. There you go, Donna. Okay. So this is a lib guide that we created. And also, oh, I should have put that link on here too. Um, we also created a lib guide for faculty um, to help you, but there's also this lib guide is specifically for technology checkouts. And um, if you go just to the library landing page on the website, the very first thing on there is the link to this page. And it says fall technology checkouts. And this just gives students all the information that they need for, um, for getting an appointment. They need to check do the request form for their calculator or for um, an iPad, laptop, or the MiFi, and then they, um, can do the online appointment scheduling. If they have trouble with that, they can call. We have someone um, answering the phones all the days that we're open, has our hours of operation, and we're open till noon on Saturdays, uh, till noon on Fridays, and then we were open late on Wednesdays and then just nine to four on the rest of the week. And so it just gives them information about what they need to do and how they need to do that to get their, um, to get that device. But within the, the, I'll do a plug, it's not about technology, sort of, is for the whole, for the library itself, there is a, a, li a lib guide for faculty that when you go to our library website, you'll see the, the, the link to it. It just helps you as faculty about how to access and use and how to help your students use things, uh, use our whole library services online. Our librarians are doing reference desk time that we're doing all of our research assistance things online and it's the same for tutoring so all of our tutoring is online thousands of students came to see us during the spring semester so um, both of the all of that is still available to you as faculty um, we have uh, just so much tutoring and assistance the librarians are available and can help students students can still check out books they can uh, still check out the technology and our, our reserves are also still available to students. We just do them like two chapters at a time and we can either send it to them via uh, an email or if they need a copy printed out, they can make an appointment to come by and pick it up uh, <clears throat> from us. So, so the, all of those services are still available to students. And so we want you as faculty to know as well that all the things you've used the library for, you can still do that. It's just in a different way. So they are eager and waiting to, to hear from you. Okay, the next piece, let's see if I can get that over there, is the staff and faculty checkout. 
it's the similar, like the help desk that you would go to. And if you guys haven't done this yet, we actually have a temporary equipment checkout for COVID-19 that's currently there that you fill out your information. The one piece that I will ask that you do is that you put your dean, director, and or supervisor in there because I will not approve it if it has not been approved by your dean or direct supervisor. I will deny it and ding it back because it needs to go through that process so I can monitor where things are going and, and watch that. So that is that piece that's there. Uh, it's been very helpful. I know that I received many emails, um, even text messages throughout the spring semester about, hey, I need this equipment, hey, I need that. Like Donna said, there's a lot of things that are talked about in passing. And um, I will tell you, I broke down my email from 7,500 to 6,300 over the weekend, last weekend. So that was a really big stretch. So if you feel like something gets lost, understand that it's not purposely done, that there are a lot of things that are rolling through as that. So this is the greatest way to request your equipment as um, that's where we are. And as I stated, we are leaving it to one piece of equipment, you know, a laptop, or if you're asking for your desktop, we can look and see if that's possible. I would tell you for any full-time faculty that is asking for their desktop to go home, it is not Wi-Fi capable. So if you are not sitting next to your, your modem or router and connected in, it will not work. So that's been a battle we faced as well, as there was some cues and uh, confusion with that. So with that, I think we have some time for some Q&A. One of the comments that I was going to make, uh, Donna, was that Comcast now is throttling people down by data usage, and they're charging them up to an extra $100 a month for exceeding data usage, even though you have a certain speed you pay for. Yeah, that is true. Uh, mm -hmm. I, can, I got you, Donna. And I can actually help with that a little bit, is that if you start seeing that, you need to call Comcast. What you're going to see and I will be completely honest with everybody because I'm in the same boat. Uh, you know, I'm, I do still go into the office a day or two a week, so I'm still there. But the thing is, is you are now, you've got all your people starting school, your kids starting school, even mm -hmm. your older kids starting school that might be online. When you put on a whole bunch of equipment on one little modem, it's going to throttle down. You may get... Um, you know, jitters or bouncing around as you're trying to zoom or watch a video. So that multiple user piece is an issue. Um, the MiFi would be the same thing if you put too many users on that. You know, and remember the MiFi's are for if if you have one, it, it is for your business use, not necessarily for the whole family. So they're not built for that. They are pretty much built for individual usage. Um, as Canvas is not smartphone friendly. Yep. Uh, you guys, you know, I was an adjunct for three years before I took this position. I get it. You know, I battled every student issue that came across as well. I, I do understand. Let's see. What will the return policy look like on going forward on that? Uh, if you are a full time faculty and continuing to teach, we will, you will keep that piece of equipment. If you are an adjunct and you are not teaching, it will need to come back. I wish I could leave it with everybody, but it's still, again, you know, let's say we do come back in January. Donna and I were talking about this morning as I started to sweat and think, oh my gosh, what's going to happen in January when we all come back? Uh, if, you know, pinning, you know, God willing that we're all able to come back and be safe, I said, oh my gosh, how are we gonna get all the equipment back and flip it back into the classrooms? Because again, I am still not only focusing on what you guys are doing at home right now, try to make sure our campus is done and ready to go as well. And keeping those, those people functioning and, and when you come back. So if you're not teaching, I would request, and you don't need it for work at that point for our work, I would request that it comes back. If you come back in as an adjunct and you wanna recheck it out in the next fall or 
or if you're coming back in the spring, it would be great if you could bring it back. If a MiFi is used for personal use, would it be, would it help with using less data usage? Amanda, are you referring to at home? So if a MIFA is used for personal use, would it be helpful using with using less data? Oh, you're talking about then yes for work. Are you talking about using your personal connection at home? Just so you know, that statement though is very broad. Just because somebody's being throttled down does not mean that everybody's going to be throttled down. So don't, you need to watch your connection and see how it's going to work before you assume that you need to up your usage and, and go forward. Um, I, yeah, I was, um, I've already gotten noticed from Comcast that I've been using, and it's pretty much just me all day here. I'm the only one um, using the internet connection during the day. So I did already get notified um, by Comcast my last billing cycle. I'm assuming that I'm gonna go over data this, this month. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if my fi a MiFi connection would help at all. It could. I will tell you the my I don't I, I don't have my is for staff and faculty at the moment. I have my is for students. So that is where that that first round that we're getting right now is going to. I have very few. So if you reached out to look at a MiFi, but even if you got your own MiFi or if you're looking at that, it will still be a um, you know, another cost. It might be better to call Comcast and talk to them to see what other plans they might have or what options there are. Okay. I know Comcast price did come down a bit. Right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you for sharing the internet speed test. That's a great thing. Let's see. You know, Veronica, it's hard for me to troubleshoot things when I see it. She said, I have, I, I used a work issued MiFi and my family uses our regular internet connection. Would it make a difference? Well, it just depends. It's still on how many people you're using on your home internet versus the MiFi. It's all, all relevant to uh, how many people are using it at the same time or what's going on. I know there's a lot of fear, especially with K-12 and all of us having our kids at home. I, I totally understand it and sympathize. Again, Donna and I had that discussion this morning as, you know, I have a fourth grader that I'm going to have to have on Zoom while I'm Zooming and trying to work out and get all these things done. So it, it is a, and it's not something I know how it's all going to work. We just, again, have to have patience and work through it. Are there any other questions? So I'm putting the link in the chat for um, students to get to the, the tech loans page. So if all of you instructors could put that in your Canvas class and just let students know that that's the place they can go if they are saying, I, you know, I don't have equipment or you get something from them about it. Just make sure that they know they can check out some devices from us. And if they go here directly, they would be able to do that. So we're hoping to do a couple of um, online social media things over the weekend to, to remind students that they can come in and get devices, but um, it'd be great if you could put that in your, in your Canvas or make an announcement or send it out, however you wanna do that. And I'll go ahead and copy the uh, help desk for staff and faculty in there as well. Uh, looks like we got you guys done a little bit early. Don and I are gonna stick around in here for another 15 or so minutes. We appreciate everybody being here. Yes, thanks hey, for Donna. Hey, Donna. Yes. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you. This is Joseph. I just want to say thank you for all, all that you and Jennifer did. Man, I'll tell you, as you know, we it was pretty crazy for us, but I can't thank even you. imagine what it was like for y'all handling 500 of people like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Joseph. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is Gail. Too true. Thank you, you guys. You guys are we great. We appreciate everybody's patience and, and grace as well. We've all learned a great deal of patience. <laughs> yes, that is true. That yeah. is true. And more to come. If you figure it all out again, it's all going to change again, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's the one thing about this that's going to change.
I forgot to put the actual, I forgot to click enter on the. Yeah, students don't have to log in if anybody's still left. They, for, to request services, they do not have to log in on our website, on our webpage. All right, any other questions? We've got about 15 people still in. They're probably waiting to see if anybody else has questions. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's what we're here for. Oh, I forgot to remind them to do the if anybody's still here, a reminder to do the um, evaluation. Yes. My nose is itchy. Sorry. <laughs> like my nose all of a sudden started itching. Good old Alex. Um, I believe the evaluation is in the email that you got with your registration. Is that right, Keelan? Uh, yeah, Susie said that if they go to the confirmation email they got telling them which session or sessions they're in, in each of those, it will also have a link for the specific session evaluation form to fill in. Perfect. I imagine she will send out a reminder as well. Thank you again to our awesome interpreters. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you as well. Thank you, you're welcome. Did I color on the slide? <laughs> I was going to ask you that. It looks like you uh, marked on your screen or the slide. I don't know. I just wanted to color. <laughs> <laughs> different. I'm used to using two of the same size slide or screens to do this. This is the first run at that. It was a, I kept bouncing to the other screen as an external instead of having two externals. So I get oh. it. It's training for everybody. I did have a question. Sure. Um, are students being asked to provide a ID card when they're checking anything out from the library? We do ask for some sort of ID. It does not have to be a Fresno City College ID. Um, if they have a driver's license or a California ID or even right now, because we have a lot of students that are coming from the high schools who some don't have any other kind of ID except their high school ID, we are also accepting that. And if, if they don't have anything, we'll work with them on that so we're very flexible but for the most part they do need to show some kind of id <clears throat> and um oh there was something that just came to my head that went along with that that i was going to say uh but now oh it also if a student can't come let's let's say for example and i should have said this earlier 
a student is sick. Well, obviously we don't want them to come in, but school starts next week and they want to get their device. They just need to call us and uh, the library number and we will work with them. Um, they can designate someone to come in and check out their device because we don't want them to have to wait to get their device. Oh, okay, thank you. That's good to know because a student had, had uh, asked me, um, a, a new coming student had asked me where do they get their ID if they don't have one and the library was asking them for their school ID to check the, some calculator out or something. So it, is it okay it if I let says, them know that? Yeah, it just says ID. It doesn't say school ID, but I think a lot of students, especially incoming students, just think school ID. So I think this is about the fifth time that question's come up in the last three days. So I think we, we need to change maybe more clearer on the website that it can be any form of ID. Normally oh. student activities uh, located in the same building that the college cafeteria is would do them, but they don't have staff in there. Yeah, uh, cause we're, yeah, we're not doing new IDs for this year right now. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. And the only people left in here now are May, the two interpreters, and the three of us. All right. Now it's just us. All <laughs> right. Interpreters. Stop the recording, Donna. Yes, I will stop the recording. Uh, thank you. Hey, nice working with you all. Thank you want me to hit the button? I can cut. Thank you guys.